Hey, it's Joe. Welcome back to Human Fluence. Today we're going to talk about Gnostic eschatology, their interpretation of the end of the world and the return to the divine. Imagine for a moment a different kind of end, one that doesn't hinge on fire and brimstone, but on enlightenment and liberation. This is the essence of Gnostic eschatology, a vision of the end times that departs radically from the familiar narratives of destruction and divine judgment. In Gnostic eschatology, the end of the world isn't about the physical realm's demise. It's about the soul's ultimate release from the chains of the material world and its return to the divine source from which it came. To fully grasp this concept, we first need to understand the Gnostic view of the cosmos. Picture the world we live in, not as a creation of a benevolent God, but as a flawed construct, a prison of sorts. This material world, according to Gnostic belief, was brought into existence by the Demiurge, a lesser, ignorant God who, in his arrogance, mistakenly believes himself to be the supreme creator. The Demiurge, often identified as Yaldabaoth, is not a being of light but of darkness and deception. And the world he fashioned reflects his ignorance. Above this flawed creation lies the Pleroma, a realm of divine fullness and light where the true God, or Monad, resides alongside the Aeons, beings of pure wisdom and spiritual power. The material world, in contrast, is a realm of shadows, where souls are trapped, blinded to their true nature by the illusions and manipulations of the Demiurge and his Archons. Now let's delve into the role of the Archons. They're not just passive rulers, they actively work to keep humanity ignorant of its divine origins. These malevolent entities, led by Yeldabaoth, weave a web of distractions, suffering, and fear to prevent souls from realizing their true purpose, to escape this material prison and return to the Pleroma. The Archons maintain the illusion that the world is all there is, that the physical realm is the ultimate reality. But the Gnostic texts tell a different story, a story where this illusion is temporary destined to fade away as souls awaken to the truth. So what does the end of the world look like in Gnostic terms? It's not an apocalyptic cataclysm, but a profound liberation. The Gnostic end times are about the dissolution of the material world, not through destruction, but through a collective awakening, a realization that the physical realm is an illusion, a mere shadow of the true spiritual reality that lies beyond it. In this vision, the world doesn't end in a fiery apocalypse, but simply loses its hold over us. As souls gain gnosis, a deep experiential knowledge of the divine, the power of the demiurge and his archons diminishes. The material world, once perceived as solid and real, begins to dissolve as more and more souls transcend its deceptions and return to the Pleroma. The end then is a return, a reawakening to the light and fullness of the divine source. Central to this process is the figure of Sophia, the Aeon whose tragic mistake led to the creation of Yaldabaoth, and by extension, the material world. Sophia's story is one of redemption. She places a divine spark within each soul, a fragment of the Pleroma that Yeldabaoth cannot touch. The spark is our key to escaping the material world. It is the light within us that, when recognized and nurtured, can guide us back to the true reality beyond the physical realm. And then there's the role of Christos. Not the Christ of Orthodox Christianity, but the Gnostic Savior, who comes not to judge, but to awaken. Christos descends from the Pleroma to bring Gnosis to humanity. To 
remind us of our divine origins and to guide us in our journey back to the light. In the Gnostic end times, Christos returns not as a conqueror, but as a revealer of hidden truths. His mission is to help humanity see through the deceptions of the Demiurge and embrace the Gnosis that leads to liberation. This awakening is not a sudden event, but a gradual process. A cosmic shift in consciousness where the false reality of the material world is exposed for what it truly is. As more souls awaken, the power of the Archons fades, and the world as we know it begins to dissolve. The end times in Gnostic thought are a cosmic reset, a restoration of the divine order that was disrupted by the Demiurge's creation. In this reset, the material world is not destroyed in a conventional sense. It simply ceases to matter. The souls that have attained Gnosis return to the Pleroma, reuniting with the divine source from which they came. This isn't a loss of individuality, but a return to a higher state of being, where the soul's true essence is fully realized in the context of divine unity. Finally, as we contemplate the Gnostic vision of the end times, we're reminded that it's not about fear or judgment. It's about hope and liberation. In the end, the Gnostic view of the world's end is not an end at all, but a beginning, a return to the light where all souls, having awakened from the dream of the material world, find their way back to the fullness of the divine. It's a powerful reminder that our true home is not in this world of shadows and illusions, but in the light and unity of the Pleroma, where we can finally find peace and liberation. Human fluence, out. <laughs>